Welcome, welcome to UF Throttle Podcast. This one is with Natya Pleshko, one of the best human beings you'll ever meet in your life. If I could bet by NCA rules, I would bet that's the case that you never met anybody like Natya. He is really super smart, uh, really strong, and just amazing human being. Uh, he's traveling around the US right now. His story is incredible. Check it out on his YouTube channel. Uh, but before this was, when this was recorded, he just started his journey of 50 states. He's been to maybe 30 right now. He came from Slovenia from humble beginnings, worked really, really hard to get to US, worked really hard in school. He's one of the smartest students at UVA, not just athletes that we ever had. And he's working from home now, working from the van that Jordan helped him build. And I think they had a, as, as good of a time building that van as they ever had at UVA. So check out his story, check out this interview. Not say it was is a true pleasure to have met you, to be here when you were here, and to continue to be a friend. Uh, and guys, you'll see why I'm saying these things because he's just an incredible human being. Check out Nazi Pleshko. You can't explain Nazi to people, people have to meet him. Nats's name is often mispronounced as Nates, which is actually his older brother's name, spelled N-E-J-C. Nats, though from Slovenia, is a human Swiss knife. Throws shot put, discus, some javelin, speaks English, Slovenian, German-ish, Java, Python, C++, Ruby. He's the first generation in his family to go to college in the U.S. to bench press 440 pounds. Uh, last picture before I leave 200. Uh, when you were young, yeah. There we go, come on, strong! Up, 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 Easy! He's an incredible cook and will make your day every day. Natsa is not the only track and field athlete in his family. His older brother, Nate, as mentioned, is one of the best hammer throwers in the world, although surprisingly he cannot bench press 440 pounds. When he graduates, Natsa wants to buy a sailboat and go on an adventure. Perhaps sail around the world? We wish you smooth sailing, Natsa. All right, so we have Natsa Pleshko here with us. And Natsa, a long time student at UVA, one of the best throwers at UVA of all time, as we said in the preview here. Uh, Natsa has an incredible story, Came from, uh, comes from Slovenia, and now he's in U.S. He was at Virginia for a little bit, and now he's all over U.S., but uh, we'll talk more about that. You can see now, uh, before we start, Natsa, where are you right now? Currently, I'm in the parking lot in North Carolina, in Charlotte. Um, so yeah, literally, if I go outside of uh, the van, I'll be literally next to the restaurants in Charlotte. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty weird. It's a really weird location. So not, not something that uh, anyone would expect probably as of right now. But yeah, yeah it, 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 it's a van, obviously. Yeah, Natsa joined a van life uh, group, uh, or he's uh, he's uh, traveling around the U.S. in a van uh, for a year, right? So we'll talk more about that. That's exciting. Nothing about you, Natsa, is boring. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of exciting things. So, yeah. <laughs> a lot of exciting things from a from a, a Slovenian shop putter to America to computer programmer. Now, computer programmer, still you have a full time job and doing a uh, doing a dream, living a dream traveling around the US. Uh, so we'll talk about that before. We'll start from the start. Now I'd say, how was, how was growing up in Slovenia in terms of sports? Did you start with the track right away or did you do any other sports before track and field? Oh, I actually played quite a few uh, sports. I played, I, I think I started with soccer actually, um, but that didn't turn out to be to be my sport. Um, I, I found out that I learned that really quickly and then I switched to basketball because um, most of my schoolmates were playing basketball and I was pretty tall and that was going on for a few years which was really fun and I was always good at jumping and that was basically jumping and defense um, but I was never good at shooting or anything else really. 
So yeah, then um, I slowly transitioned into a track and field, just because my brother Nate was um, he he also went through so many different sports, soccer, basketball. Um, I don't know he he did um, other stuff. Slovenia, you play? Uh, um, yeah, handball as well. Um, so he did lots of sports, and he found out that track and field is the best one. Um, he he tried with uh, he started with running events, and then uh, eventually I think when Primoz Cosmos won um, Olympic medal, he mm -hmm. got excited about hammer throw. So he he tried hammer throw, and he really enjoyed um, throwing. So. I was like, uh, I'll also try it out and see, see even what it is. Because growing up, I even had no idea what throwing is really. Um, first time I I saw hammer throw was when I saw him throwing on practice, and same for javelin and shot put and discus. Um, so yeah, I I went on practice and I was I was um, I was pretty good at the beginning. I just picked up stuff and was decent. Um, I wasn't the best, but still decent, and I thought that I, I could have some chance there, and yeah, that's how I got into it, and yeah, I, I've been doing it for probably a, about 10 years. I mean, I'm not doing it now anymore, um, but yeah, it was a good period of life for sure. Um, I mean, an, an amazing period. How old were you when you start, started the track and field? I was um, the last last class of my um, primary school, so one year before high school. So that was that was um, I don't know how even how old even I was. Like 14, 15, 14, 15. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't um, I wasn't that young because most of these yeah. kids start track and field way earlier, and then by the time they get to high school, they are already really mm -hmm. um, I mean developed. But I, I just started just before high school, so um, kind of started late, but still at a decent age. Yeah. That's a good uh, point that you mentioned. In the uh, U.S., more, this that's very early, right? A lot of people in the U.S. start with track. They play football. They play basketball. They don't start till freshman, sophomore year. Uh, in, oh, yeah. in high school, right? And then think that's early, right? When they start, oh, freshman in high school, that's early. In Europe, we start much earlier than that. And uh, if you want to be the really, really good, like Ryan Krauser, right? He started when he was in the womb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah exactly. Yeah. Seven-year-old, he was doing drills already in the basement. Uh, so if you want to be the best, really, you have to start early. So um, good point. That's interesting that you mentioned that I started late, even though you were... Yeah, that, that, that's true, yeah, because uh, in Europe, I feel like, um, at least in Slovenia, you pick a sport when you're really young and then you stick with it and either you, you succeed in it or not. Um, but uh, like you mentioned, in the U.S., uh, high school is the time that people are trying out so many different sports. They are even on multiple teams at the same time, like basketball, soccer, or even doing track on the side. Um, so yeah, that's, that's true, yeah. in the U.S., people start in general later very late, yeah we, well we, very we late compared to right. european european standards uh yeah, you I, did not throw shop at first you started with a different sport for different events right yeah yeah I, I i definitely um i i tried javelin um because i was really skinny i mean even skinnier than now i i, I really wasn't um i wasn't heavy at all so i started with javelin and it went well at the beginning, but then with time, I feel like I just didn't relax. I was just really tense. I mean, just that's obviously looking back. I, I didn't know at the time um, that I wasn't relaxed, but I was just trying to muscle muscle it. And obviously, that's no go with javelin. Um, and it turned out that in shot put, it can bring you somewhere with shot put if you, if you just tighten up all muscles and throw um so Very that strong. yeah that worked for shot but so i, I was um I, I was trying all different um things just because um i mean even throwing different things is good uh, when when you're young just to get the um the feel for the different throwing uh, stuff 
and yeah surprisingly I, I was pretty good in shot put even though I wasn't um I wasn't big that and big, strong yeah. yeah um I just had really good feeling for it so yeah then I think I was throwing maybe javelin for I, I was actually throwing it for quite a bit maybe a year or two years um okay. if I'm not mistaken I don't I actually don't know Looking back, it, it was, just... It was a traumatic period in your life. You know? Yeah, it, it definitely <laughs> was. <laughs> it, it started off really well, and then my... With more practice, I was throwing less, and more competitions, and there, at the end, at the end, at the end, there were competitions that I would throw 30 something meters, and I was like, ah. And that was not for me. That was not for me, and I was like, okay, I don't even want to do javelin anymore. Um, yeah. But meanwhile, the shot put went really well, and I remember that um, what was the first competition, uh, World Youth Junior, uh, World Youth Competition. Um, youth, yeah, seventeen year old, yeah, youth, yeah. Yeah, for the it was in Donetsk. Okay. Yeah, and um, it yeah it was five k. It was in Donetsk, so we had to choose. Okay, if I really want to make um, Donetsk, um, mm -hmm. I had to either like um, put my stuff together in javelin and come yeah. come make a comeback from 30 meters um <laughs> or i i had to just get stronger and do throw more shot put and practice shot put more and i was like yeah let's do shot put because i did not enjoy javelin anymore just because yeah. just because the harder i tried yeah, I, I, I i was really i was trying hard i was um i was really really i wanted to be good but then just because I was so tense and um, I was forcing it, um, it didn't fly at all. And then which which output, just because it was going well, I was able to relax and I didn't even think that I'm trying that hard. It just it was it just felt more natural. So yeah, I'm I'm glad I'm glad uh, I got into shot put because um, because um, I I think it's a it's an amazing sport. It got you far too, man. That's very true. Yeah. When they, when you when you are sometimes trying too hard, and if it's not going well, you try even harder. In javelin, it's really you have to be relaxed and long, uh, so it doesn't javelin doesn't uh, respect the tightness. Yeah, yeah, it does not. It does not. And the same the same the same thing happened in shot put as well. And you know it that I was really trying hard, but um, still with spin. Um, you you can be a little tense, but in the moment I I did not know. I was like, ah, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? And then just looking back, I, I wish I could go back in time. I mean, but that's obviously what everyone says. Yeah. Um, I would just literally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, you know, try to lift more or, you know, eat more or sleep more. I would just yeah, just relax while throwing. But I also know that you are. You were literally telling me that when you and I had to go to take dance lessons to to relax, but yeah, I remember that. I, yeah, I I do, yeah. So it was, it was oh, okay. I'll go take these dance lessons and try to relax. Um, but it's different if someone else tells you, yeah, you just have to relax and throw, mm. um, as opposed to like just you re realizing it years afterwards. Oh, okay. That's Actually, what he was telling me. At the moment, yeah. it's always like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll relax. But yeah. Um, yeah. now I know that um, probably I wasn't really ever relaxed while throwing. Yeah. Uh, so I always yeah. test. But yeah. you learned a lot. But at the end of the day, you did throw far. Um, so um, both discus and shot. So you did find, and that's the thing with, with the sports and anything in life, you got to find a way that works for you. And it might be yeah. different things. It might be a dance, right? So that's why I go, told you go go ahead and uh, and uh, join a class if there is a class there, and you do exceptionally well uh, after that. Maybe just because it clicked in your maybe yeah, maybe know. yeah it could be could be because all these things um, they just look complicated uh, throwing, but it's really the trick is to try to keep it simple. Even yeah, when, when I came to first to UVA, when I came to uh, my official visit. And I watch you guys practice. I'm like, damn, you really just you say two things. Okay, you focus on this and this. And that's all. No philosophy, nothing. Um, yeah. Just like, yeah, just do. I don't know. Enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, just enjoy it and focus on one thing, and 
uh, see how that one thing works for you because not might not work for someone else and that's the whole practice and i was shocked because um i mean obviously i i've seen other coaches um especially i feel like um in lots of universities they they love to talk they love to explain the whole philosophy behind the throwing the whole physics mm. i don't know all the concepts but really it's um like you always said as long as you get to um good power position at the end doesn't matter how you get there as long as yeah. you hit good position at the end um you'll throw far and yeah. you don't need to understand all the philosophy and you don't need to worry about all that because that that becomes overwhelming really really quickly yeah. i feel like so when i saw when i saw like how how philip practices um on my on my visit i was like yeah. That's that's crazy. It's like it's nothing. It's not a uh, rocket it looks, science. It looks so easy, right? Yeah, it's so not rocket science. You guys are not doing anything special. You guys are just, yeah. um, you know, just going through the movements. Yeah. Yeah, just going through the movements, and um, and yeah, it's definitely um, the same with um, yeah how I should relax. I was yeah. I think I was just trying to overcomplicate all the stuff, which yeah. which which is I mean, Shapot can bear, but Jalen cannot. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely, Shabu, definitely you not. can kind of sometimes muscle it, but you won't throw as far. You still throw, but you don't throw as far. Jalen, absolutely not. No so, no. so I think that pushed you into, into Shaput. And I'm sure with this mindset, you will be able to throw Jalen better as well. But uh, like you said, yeah, everybody I mean, says that we should, you can go back in time. But at least you found your smoothness in the Shaput at the end. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was really, really happy how the Shaput went um and how it felt and especially i mean not many people know this but i used to be a glider and i i, I really ha i had really really good um feeling for glide and then i had a really weird injury um that i still cannot explain um yeah. you have we had to switch switch uh to rotation at the end uh, yeah, yeah. So you were throwing with a glide the whole time before you came to US, right? Why? Right, and you yeah. did well. You did really well as a youth, a 70 year old, very well with it as a junior. You threw almost 20 meters with a six kilogram. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, man. Did I throw? Maybe I threw actually. You did throw 20. Maybe. I, I yeah, that's. <laughs> it was that's... around 20. It was either 1990 something or 20 or something. I think it was 2004. 2004. Yeah, with six. 20 million, which is really good with a six kilogram. Uh, and that was that was the 18 year old, right? 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old, yeah, yeah. It was it was the first year. The first it year was the junior, first yeah. year of youth year. So I was like, yeah, next year I. Oh, have to 22 throw, meters, right? right? Yeah, yeah. But then, <laughs> um, but then at that time already when I threw that personal best with six k, my knee already started yeah. hurting. Um, but I thought yeah, we're, it's we're throwing with the switch technique, right? The step in. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, yeah. So you're doing well with the glide. Uh, you're doing well in the Slovenia. What kind of high school did you go to? I went to Gymnasia Schindfried, which is which is amazing. So it was a um, in Slovenia you can choose basically with, um, either you want to go to spe specialized high school or if you want to go to general purpose high school, um, which prepares you better for college so i went to this general um, general education high school um at gymnasia Schindfried, and we had we had um we had many athletes there as well so people and still are still today it, it's amazing i i love the school and all the people that i met there they're they're amazing and especially professors they were really supporting they were supporting me in what i did because nice. even even in high school, I was just studying and training, and that was all I did for whole high school, yeah. just studying and training. And I had fun; it was really fun. It didn't feel like it didn't feel like um, hard work. It like, was a, just like a burden. It wasn't. It wasn't burden. When you have people like that supporting around you, you feel much better about what you're doing. It's much easier to put hard effort. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it the the hard effort doesn't feel like a hard effort at all, and the same thing happened at UVA. Then uh, I mean, where I had even more support, and it, even like nothing felt like a hard effort. 
everything was um, just fun and hang out with friends. And yeah. how come? How did you decide about studying in America? Yeah, that was that was a um, that was a, an interesting decision because in Slovenia, no one coaches don't want you to go to the U.S. Yeah. because they they say yeah they just they're go to the U.S. Right? Yeah, they're losing an athlete. Okay. Yeah, but that's really it's not about it's not really about coaches. It's really about the athletes. It should be. So I was like in like we when we talk we were talking uh, earlier that I threw my personal best my first year of junior year, um, and I, I was I was in finals in Eugene. I was in World Championship finals. Um, and that but you were no was he more in the final too? Yeah. I I don't think so. I I think he triple fouled. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> I mean, so 2014, you were in the final in Eugene World Junior Championships. Correct. Yeah, I think it was 2014. Um, and then then I got so many recruiting coaches coming mm -hmm. up to me, and I was like, I mean, uh, in Slovenia, the uh, the rumor is that yeah, people who go to the US get screwed up they they don't do anything out of their career and uh, it just sucks you shouldn't go so i had that mentality and i was like yeah i'm i'm here in in finals i'm throwing far and i literally don't care about the us I, i'm not going and then next year the next year was the year um i already had a bunch of issues with my knee and i didn't add up onto those 20 meters so you know, I, I did um, negative progress, so I was just throwing maybe 1850, I think we'd already did that step back technique. Mm -hmm. And then things weren't going that well, um, as, as I thought earlier. Yeah, and then yeah. and then in Eskilstuna, it was European, European, um, European Junior, Junior Championship. Championship yeah. Yeah, in Eskilstuna, again, coaches approached me um, about the US and I wasn't even that good anymore. I don't think I even made finals there. And then I started thinking, oh, wow, well, you know, they still want me. And I said, yeah, well, I'm my knee is injured. I, I literally cannot do glide. Um, I can do this uh, step back technique. And they were like, no, nah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, we just want you to come here. And, um, and then I started thinking about it. Um, and at first, at first, it's a, it sounds like a scam. It sounds like a scam. Like, why would anyone want you to come to the US? Give you all this money. Yeah, give you all. School, yeah, come, right? yeah, pay for school, and all you had to do is to throw for them. Um, and so that that sounded it, like, it, a it like a scam. Yeah. yeah, but then I saw I saw um, Philip. I mean, I I saw Philip on the some competitions in Europe. And then I saw that he was in the U.S. and he was doing extremely, extremely well um, at UVA. And uh, I saw also Muhars, um that they were in the U.S. The and Muhar, yeah, Slovenia, very good javelin throwers. Yeah? yeah, yeah, extremely, extremely good. And I was like, damn, they didn't get scammed. At least it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't uh, look like they got scammed. Uh, you know, they're still fine. They still come back um, during summers and compete in Europe. And they, you know, so that that got me thinking. Um, well, yeah, I'll just try it out. And mm -hmm. in the worst case, yeah, th that's the best part of it that you can leave whenever I want, uh, whenever you want. I think even if I could go, if I went to school, and I didn't like it, I could leave the next week, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't owe any money to any anyone. I wouldn't be. Um, I, I wouldn't be obligated to commit to yes. for four years. Yeah, yeah you can just yeah. leave. So I'm like, what do I have to lose? I, I don't have anything to lose. Um, in the worst case, I'll miss one semester of university in Slovenia, Slovenia. but that's fine. Like I, I can I can I can do that later. Um, so I took an opportunity and I tried it out. I went to different school first, um, didn't go to UVA, which which was which was because at first I was like I I don't know like. These random names really don't mean anything to me. Like University of yeah, Virginia. Schools, like, well, you don't know what schools. Yeah, yeah. How how, schools are, yeah. how would I know University of Virginia or Iowa or 
all of that stuff. Pennsylvania or Florida, yeah. Yeah, e okay. everything, everything sounded the same to me. So I, I went randomly um, to a school. To, I went to Iowa State, and which was great. People were good, but just the, really the, um, the training, the training um, mindset and schedule really didn't work out for me. For Be you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, yeah, because um, I, I always wanted to, um, I knew that there is way more beyond throwing. Throwing is great for certain things, but there is beyond throwing. So I, I wanted to be a software engineer and I was uh, studying, even coming into school, I was, uh, they were asking me, what do you want to study? And I was like, oh, I want to study computer science. You already and, knew. Yeah, yeah I, I literally, I knew, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm not coming if I, if I can't study computer science. Right. And then they were like, yeah, but you know, like you, you will be an athlete and you'll have lots, you know, practices and all this uh, yeah. stuff. And then I was like, okay, yeah, then I, I won't come. And they were like, ah, okay, I mean, let's try it out and see how it works. And, and I, I went there and I was studying computer science. It, it was like school was really good, but then just the time we spent on practice was um, a bit uh, in too much. Yeah, in, 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 well. yeah in, it didn't work out for me. Um, I like, I really like the style of just show a practice, uh, do, uh, do the job and leave and okay yeah. go and do do other stuff yeah. and i yeah so that's why i decided decided to resign from iowa state because in uh, the day you had to resign first before you could talk to other coaches there were no portals before now you go into the portal and uh, you were you can transfer anywhere but you used to you, ha you used to have to go to talk to the head coach and say uh, right right yeah you you used to um in my day you just had to give up scholarship, and then at that point you were able to look for other schools. School. Yeah, and now now today I think it's you just go to Portal and it, it's easier. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was people there at Iowa um, were like, "Oh, you're just giving up the scholarship. What if you don't get anything?" And like, yeah, what if you have to go back to Slovenia? And I'm like, I, I was like, "Well, I I can try." So you know. I, I know that I, I like school and I like uh, I like both school and throwing and I wasn't I, I was kind of happy but I know that I knew that I can do better um, that I can find somewhere that um, it's you better somewhere that fits you better yeah. that, that fits me better yeah yeah exactly um, yeah. I then, um, I always say I'm I transferred myself when I came to US. This is a little bit before you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 2005, my first school, great school, amazing, but same like you. I didn't know what's a good school, what's a bad school, what's a south school, what's a north school. Uh, culture is a little different in every school, and it's very important to visit. Uh, we from Europe, we don't have that much opportunity to visit because you have to fly across the Atlantic Ocean back and forth, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. for us, that was different. We were just okay. I think this is going to be okay, but once you come here and see that it's there's a lot of different options that you can fit better for your personality, for your skills, um, then luckily now you uh, you can transfer. But uh, we didn't have the option to visit first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because also you, uh, I think uh, if you want to visit, you have to do SATs and all that stuff. And like who from Europe want to do SATs first and then go visit and then commit. Yeah. So you kind of just have to commit. Right. But yeah, I then then I, I, I gave up my scholarship at Iowa State and then I literally emailed emailed so many schools. Um, hey, um, I throw this far, this far. My GPA is this. I want yeah. to study. I want to study computer science. Um, and are you interested? And I, I actually, I actually got way more uh, responses back than I thought I would. I was, I was trying as well the um, Ivy League schools, but then they wanted my parents. They don't take transfers. They don't take transfers. Ah, uh, some, some, some were talking to me. Um, I, I think just which one Stanford doesn't take transfers, but I think others, others are. But then they wanted my parents' tax information and how much the house is worth, and I was like, ah, I, I don't want to, because uh, yeah. because it's uh, yeah. need based. It's not they don't have no scholarship scholarships. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was like, ah, like I don't 
care talking yeah. to them anymore. So, yeah, and then I, w I wanted to go to Berkeley and they said you can do computer science, it would be hard to come in. And um, at the same time, I was also on, like traveling to visit UVA and after the visit, I was like, okay, I, 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 I don't care about Berkeley at all. Um, doesn't matter if they don't let me computer science, I won't even try to bargain about it. Um, but yeah, because when I came to UVA to my official visit, I was like, ah, maybe they're just, um, maybe they're just like making things faking, nice, faking. <laughs> faking it, yeah, for official visit, and and you know just having short practices. And even just like two or three people at the same time, at most two or three people at the same time throwing. Um, and I was like, that's, that sounds a little bit too good to be true. But I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll come here. My expectations will be like, okay, a bit lower than what it was on official visit. And it will still be amazing. So I was really, really excited about UVA and it's literally the best the best thing that happened to me, um, I mean, ever. Choosing, because... choosing to call it, yeah. Uh, yeah we are, I can tell you, I can tell the same thing. We were very fortunate that you came because you made, you made an unbelievable difference with your attitude, with your hard work, uh, your dedication, uh, and you show everybody that things can be done both in school and, uh, and in field. And uh, I remember when you came first time and uh, Philip was, I think, your host. They had a great time. Guys had a great time with you. Uh, Hilmar yeah. and and Philip, they wanted you on the team. Like oh, I asked him, how's Nats? Said like, oh man, he's amazing. We should, if we can get him, we should get him. And uh, if they liked you, I liked you already for the trip. But it was important for me to have a team, cohesive team, right? So you're not just individual there, like you said. You come to practice, go home. Uh, yeah. You do so much better if you're part of the team. And that was something special we have back in 2016, 17, 18, 19. Uh, and now the, that we ha keep having is support team or your teammates, right? So it's not just yeah. a good athlete. It has to be a good athlete that fits with the team, with the culture. And you definitely have what it took. And Philip, uh, he embraced you right away and Hilmar and Jordan. And uh, we were so happy that you, that you came. And but yeah, <laughs> I remember you saying uh, a year later, like, oh, coach, I thought it was like everybody was faking at the yeah. practice. <laughs> they because, had so much fun. Yeah, and that's because, the thing. You that's, have to have fun. If you don't have fun, uh, we, you have to work. But if you don't enjoy what you do, you're not going to be the, the best at it that you, yeah, that you yeah. could. You might be good at it, but you're not the best version of yourself. You're not going to reach your potential if you're not enjoying it. Yeah, that's so true. That's, that's yeah. No, it's really what, what we had at UVA. It was incredible. And if, even if we forget all the results, like all the, yeah. all the you know, the that, yeah, all the accomplishments, yeah just that and maybe maybe that's why we we accomplished that much just because we had a great um everyone just showed up at practice even in seven in the morning when it was super cold outside everyone showed up energetic and uh happy to practice and i feel like we were taking it as a privilege and not as a as a uh, burden to uh i had to go to practice and yeah we were like we were all really excited to go to practice and yeah, those are those are amazing days, and yeah, and yeah, the official visit was just the preview was just the preview of what what was going to happen, and it wasn't inflated or anything. It was yeah. literally, yeah. it was literally just. I uh, was for next four years, three years. Yeah, yeah, just like okay, you just show up for random practice and see how you guys are doing. It wasn't anything like fancy cards, fancy dinner, or you know, a fancy, I don't know, laser tag, or I know what other schools do, but they definitely do that. And they, yeah. they're focusing, they're focusing on, on getting recruits to commit, as opposed to what I notice with, with you, you make the people want to come to you. And yeah. then, then you don't have to, I mean, at least I imagine yeah. you don't, at, at least you never showed or you never sacrificed yeah. the practice because of recruit or you're never late on practice. You never mentioned recruits uh, until like, oh, you're hosting this guy. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, we, um, you know, so that never, that never uh, distracted you from, from coaching because I feel like lots of coaches are just worried about recruiting. 
but yeah. if you yeah. if you do good a great job at coaching them then the recruits come um, yeah. on their own and i think that's the way to go and it's not about uh showing off and trying to make them um attracted yeah. to to the program it's really the program itself is what should be attracting them and that's yeah. that's exactly what uva is that's it's it's amazing it's 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 crazy what you're doing there um well, you guys are doing yeah. it right so i'm i'm uh i'm just uh lucky to be part of it but somebody like you like hildmar like jordan like bobo uh, like boos uh, james and philip right doing your guys time on the men's side uh that was the team right mm -hmm. that that was yeah. that was the whole attraction that was the engine all you together working in a special way uh to make each other better all right so yes we you do have to have knowledge as a coach obviously a technique right? you have to know some basics more than that uh, but you do have to find a way that works for for each athlete and that's why like you said we will have two or three athletes per practice not 15 plus because for me technique is the number one and if you get a talented kid you can get him to throw far or fairly far for their skills if you yeah. do very focused work with them all right so it's uh it's very important technique is really important in throwing and that's how i was coached after college my 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 second uh, college coach did that with me it was only three or four of us and i i saw a huge spike in my performance because of my technique was so much better uh it's easy to get strong uh, you go to the weight room let's lift it right yeah let's lift smart there's there's been years and years of studies on how to lift so we got that right throwing if you really like it, you'll go into technique. So we got that right, but you have to focus that hour that you have on practice, not three hours throwing and fixing. Yeah, man, yeah. And you, you can even keep focus for three, three hours if you want yeah, it to. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, that's a, that's exactly what you're, you're you're pointing out. Well, what my goal was here is to be that to have athletes want to come here. And when you come for a visit, I always tell the athletes and parents, I don't want you here if you don't want to be here. I don't yeah. care how far you throw. Uh, yeah. If you don't feel comfortable, if you don't feel like a home, because again, I'm a transfer. I came from Europe, right? Slovenia, Croatia, our neighbors speaks almost, almost the same language, similar yeah. culture, right? It's important for me to feel home. I will do whatever it takes for a practice if I feel comfortable. Um, so that's what worked for me. And it obviously worked for you guys. And I'm so happy. I'm jealous. I tell you this guys all the time yeah. that I didn't have the team that you guys had. Um, so yeah, that's, and, uh, that's how true. was, how was being part of the team at that time? With you, Hilmar, uh, Philip Pobo, Boos, James, how was it? Yeah, it was just, it, it was, it still feels like it was a dream, like it never happened. It it really feels like, okay, imagine you have a dream team and dream people and and then that's it. Because everyone, literally everyone um, that I saw, like in dining halls, on practice, in class, just everyone made me so motivated and super excited all the time and literally i thought that it would be just first maybe month or so and then the, that excitement well, would would go down yeah because yes people we tend to take things for granted and you know everything comes as a standard but at uva i, I was there for three years every single day was oh wow that's that's crazy the time here it's crazy that i'm throwing with philip and yeah. I'm bench pressing with Jordan, and it was it was just um, it was just incredible, and yeah, like even after yeah. the whole day of um, after, so we practice um, normally at seven a.m. throwing, and then had a bunch of classes, and then we were lifting at five p.m. and even like during the day, <laughs> sorry, during the day, felt uh, tired, and then like when it was time to lift, I was like, whoa, shit. Like Jordan's going to be there. We are going to do bench press, and yeah, then uh, Hilmer was there all the time, and Pobo and Philip and Boos and James, and it it was just no matter how tired I was, I would always come to lift just full of energy um, in the afternoon, and that's that's because of the team, um, because right now I I can tell right now that. I can be doing nothing the whole day, and then I go to gym, and uh, um, yeah. uh, literally, it's not it's not even close um, without the teammates and without people around you that that try that are genuinely trying to make you better. 
And that's what it was. That's what it was. Even um, Hilmar for lifting. If I if I if I were just messing around and he was he would just be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> like just lift, you know. It's not like ah, oh, it's okay. He'll do a little less today, and you know just to keep each other accountable and to push each other even. Um, I mean, especially in the days yeah. that you are not feeling yeah. great, and those days are that make you better. Um, so having the team, having the team, like we had, I think was once in a lifetime yeah. um so I, i'm not sure if there will be a team like that again um yeah. anytime soon um and also like not just for throwing and lifting outside as well and that's important and just you know um supporting each other you know i i like like to study and it's not like ah oh, you're studying uh, you shouldn't study blah 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 but they're like, yeah, uh, support me um, studying mm -hmm. and doing homework and all that. So I think um, it's not just about the throwing. It's about really when you're in college, you, you spend you spend like the whole day with them. It's not yes. like eight hours, yes. like with my coworkers now, mm -hmm. work with them eight hours a day and then our lives are completely separate. Mm -hmm. um, but in college, you just live with them and you spend the whole day with those people so it's really important that you have that you have people around you that are trying to make you better make you better yeah make you yeah. better um and that yeah that you are that you feel good and happy around them and that's yeah. there, there is the essence of of, of uh, anything that you do you got to find a good team and people who are pushing you to be better you are who you are with Right. So yeah. uh, they say you are average of five people that you spend most time with, which is very true. If you spend so much time with people, uh, they will influence you. And uh, we were very fortunate. I'm very fortunate to have you guys as you were and bringing the athletes and recruits that we were able to pick from. And then it came uh, Ryan uh, Singer came later on and Ethan Debs. Right. So Ethan also all American, very successful. Ryan, amazing guy. Uh, and yeah. you guys kill it again 2017 and then back in 2019. And this is uh, what I was talking to Nazi a little bit earlier. Nazi is only uh, one out of only few who were able to score more than 10 points at ACCs. Yeah, uh, he yeah. Scored, uh, he scored in shot put and discus, you go second in uh, 2019. And uh, that was that was incredible too. So, like I said, performance wise, you were a very, very good athlete. And school wise, you were awarded the highest gpa of the whole department one year is that right that is that is correct yeah it was the it was the highest gpa of all the athletes um graduating gpa of all the athletes so it's yeah. our community uh, i was That's, um doing yeah. that yeah which was um felt, felt really good my gpa wasn't that high surprisingly but no, no, um, it was 3.997. No, no, it, it was actually 3.7 something. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that high. So I was I was actually surprised that um, there wa wasn't someone that was studying well, something. What did you with, uh, What did you major in? I did. Uh, I studied. You yeah, major, right? I, I did. Yeah, double major. I, uh, my first major was computer science, and then the second major was mathematics, and. I got into second major. I, I really, I mean, I didn't want to study it. I just got into it just because um, I find I, I found math classes easier than all the general like sociology and all those classes. So yeah. for the, for my electives, for my electives, I was just picking math classes, and wow. then and then and then I think it was uh, Jack um, Jack Lind. He he was yeah. like, yeah, you're doing so many math classes. Why don't you just double major in it? And I was like, "Whoa, I I can do that." And then and then I I um, looked at the requirements, and I was like, "Whoa, really? Like I don't even have to do much more to to have a second major, and then it stays with you forever." Um, mm -hmm. So even now at work, I can say that I double majored. Yeah, and pe people do ask. People do ask. Um, and even though I I didn't come to school with the intent to major in math, um, it still feels good. To, to have it and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that I'm smart it just means that I just work harder in math classes because um, I, I I enjoyed those classes more than 
sociology classes because in math, in math, um, you know, if you got it right, you got it right. You get it 100%. There's, in, no, there's no different opinions with different angles, right? Exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. In sociology class, they are like, oh, that's a great job. I like your, I like your thoughts. I really like how you describe the thing. Angle, your angle. Yeah, it's, uh, I really, really like um, uh, your work. B plus. And I'm like, what do you mean B plus? <laughs> what do you mean B plus? Like, you, you just said that you like my work and you know that there is there's nothing to change so why, why be plus and then yeah I, I definitely went back um sometimes i mean then i figured out okay i just um, get this done this general requ requirements yeah. Yeah. classes um because with papers and then i figured out i literally figured it out that if i spend a week writing a paper um, I'll get exactly the same grade as if I do it in like one hour and then at the end I would just write papers for these uh, sociology classes and all these classes where I had to write papers yeah. I would just wait until the last minute I would put it together and it would always be the same grade and I was like ah, okay right? yeah B plus and so that's that's um, that's why I like math and because if you get science. everything right in math they cannot give you but but the a right yeah, so yeah, it's, it's simple like, it's simple right it, this it is what is you simple, got right yeah. this is what you got wrong that's it correct correct yeah so it's it's like day and night um it's not nice. subjective so um that's why i got into into math major right. um, well it's interesting you yeah. say you're not a smart person which is usually what smart people say but it also shows you how like you Ilmar, right he was really good a good a student uh, Philip as well. Uh, Jordan was incredible in things that he enjoyed as well. Uh, yeah. Paul Ball, yeah. you got a master's degree right there. So you guys are really exceptional students uh, and you were teammates, right? So it's not just that you have good athletes that are, like you said, throwing far, but you have really intelligent group of people around you all the time pushing you and yeah. uh, testing you, right? Hilmar, you will get into debates with Philip, with Hilmar, with Paul Ball, right? So you guys are growing with uh, uh, throwing ideas at each other. Uh, debating different things the whole time growing growing mentally and physically uh, yeah that's yeah. a very important part uh, of of the team that you choose to not just what kind of school it is what kind of teammates you have will they bring you up oh yeah yeah that's that's for sure and even like you know i i remember when i was interviewing for my current company um and i had five minutes with the ceo and he looked in my resume and he was oh you did this and this and this all at the same time and i was like yeah and he was like how how did you do that and i said yeah just because you know i had i had amazing people around me and i didn't need i didn't need to take two hours every day or every friday to hang out with my friends because my friends were literally with me the whole day so oh, yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah. hanging out i was having uh, hang out and having fun basically not 24 hours but you know, most of the time I was, right. um, I was, yeah, like, for example, even just um, eating meals together, you have to eat dinner, you know, so just yeah. optimize those thing, things to be yeah. also as a time to so, so, to social to time. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like that we just worked like machines and that was it. Um, yeah. we, we had fun. So even, but what you consider fun, what you describe as fun, I think uh, is different for uh, yeah, different yes, people yeah. yeah so like even for studying i, I would just um let him know okay take my phone don't give it to me for the next two hours um even if i say whatever just don't give it to me because i know that my phone would distract me and yeah. he'll be like yep that makes sense and you know he wouldn't give it back to me and he, he will help you be a better version of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Taking that away from you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then he will keep you accountable. Keep you accountable. E exactly. Yeah. And then also, for example, Hilmer was practicing his speeches with me, and you know we were just having yeah. fun. You know, yeah. it was schoolwork. While studying. Yeah. Yeah. It it was schoolwork, but instead of just practicing speech on your own in a room, getting frustrated. He, I mean, he he did that as well. But then at the end, he was uh, like, "Okay, can can I test out the speech um, in front of you?" And I'm like, yeah. "Yeah." And I think those are moments that are way, way underrated. And yeah. th th those are like, okay, just practice this speech, and 
you know, it's it's cool work, but at the same time, it's also social time, and mm. you know, you you have to uh, connect to each other. I mean, just to get to yeah, know uh, yeah, the other person. Have have that social human interaction with your best friend, right? Right, right. Friend. Uh, it's very, really important for your growth, for his growth, and you're learning and, and, and uh, growing together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we didn't need time to like, okay, every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll let's meet. have, yeah, yeah let's place, meet, right? yeah. yeah, let's meet and talk and we'll be social those times. And then for the, re the rest of the week, we'll work really hard. It was really not like that. We just um, work hard as we hung out. And I think yeah. that's really the ideal, the ideal um, scenario. Um, so no. yeah, that's that's really it's incredible. I met all those people there, and they definitely made me who I am today. Yeah, you you definitely did some growing up in, uh, during your uh, during uh, your time in America, right? Oh, for sure, a lot, yeah, a lot. Um, and it's been it's been like six years now, so. It's and still growing. It's still oh, growing. oh, yeah. It's yeah. even more. Even even now, the the whole another topic just of the van life. Just the amount of growth I got just living with Jordan for the past year. So how was that? Yeah, you. So yeah, you graduate working for a company. You have a really good job. You're turning down jobs because you like the company that you work with, um, and you really are good at what you do. Not so again, not just GPA wise. You're a TA. At some point as well, were you I, I helping out with the class? For, I was TA for, I believe, three semesters, so yeah. a year and a half. I was, yeah. Uh, and so this was guy like, is killing it in uh in the, in the work that he does. Uh, you're one of the best in the, in a school, one of the best in throwing, one of the best in in the programming. Now, you took a year. You you came back to live back in Charlottesville, uh, and you lived in Jordan. And when did this idea about uh van life come up yeah it's uh it was it was really really random idea because i knew jordan was selling his house and my work my work is uh remotely home. yeah w work from home forever for uh, in the current job um so i was thinking okay he's going to sell the house and i have to move somewhere like i i had good reason to be in charlottesville because of jordan and you and other 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 throwers um that i know and now it was suddenly okay what to do next because i had to i had to at least get a place somewhere like i had to rent an apartment somewhere yeah. and i was like okay i can i can work remotely so i can even be in florida i can be in california if i want to and then i was thinking and thinking where i should go and i really couldn't find out literally couldn't one narrow place, yeah. yeah one one, one place, place or that you're gonna get apartment, yeah. yeah or even top three places i couldn't figure it out um and then i was like oh i'll just i'll just go travel um because because that's apparently what everyone wants to do and i'm not i'm not a big traveler um uh, so that came out as a surprise because i never really cared about going to see places and visiting all states or visiting all museums and stuff but um that seems to be the trend what older people do after they retire they save the money for retirement and so that when they are um, you know they work for their whole life and then they go travel visit all the countries and get these experiences and i was like ah, i mean i'm young and i have the energy um and I, I had the opportunity to go to travel. And then I Googled um, just road trip through all US states. Because I, I just came up randomly to idea, oh, it, it, it could be cool if I visit all states. And then there came a, uh, on the Google, a map came up with like the most optimized path that takes you through the main things uh, in each state, uh, and that it's like the shortest path or something. Um, so that that got me thinking. I'm, I'm definitely not doing the shortest path. I'm just going left, up, down, left, okay. right. Um, but that that got me thinking. And then at the beginning, I was looking at Airbnbs, and mm. Airbnbs got really really expensive. Um, it's oh, like the pandemic, yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, I remember when Airbnbs used to be, you know, cheap, like 30, 40 bucks a night. 
and yeah now you you can't really get um probably a, uh, below 150 yeah. on average one. yeah so i was like calculating the cost if i if i do for a year if i want to visit every state it will probably mm -hmm. take me a year and like 150 uh, dollars a night for a year would be that that was out of the game that was out of the game so i was like okay i'll just look into this van life thing and i was um talking to my friends about it and my parents and were, uh, it's not a good idea it's not a good idea um and i completely understand why they thought that um but there was jordan who <laughs> who who believed right away when i mentioned to him hey i'm maybe thinking doing van life right away he was all in he was super excited all about in, yeah. it and i was like oh he thinks that this is a good idea and then yeah. also like and everyone else thinks it's a stupid idea and at the same time i was like it's not a stupid idea because everyone when when you do it right right yeah when people are old they want to travel and they want to see the world so um, oh, they don't, they are old then, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're old, yeah. They have different, you can't bear stress as much as you can now. Yeah, yeah. Now. Yeah, exactly. And I think now is the, um, now is the perfect opportunity because, I mean, if I was 60 years old and if I was traveling by myself in a van, I think that would be probably concerning. But now that I'm 25... <laughs> a little red flag there. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so that would be, that would be weird, but now... I'm like 25, um, not really tied to anything, and mm -hmm. I can do this. And yeah. I, I had extremely, extremely unique opportunity to do this because Jordan, I had Jordan. Um, yeah. First of all, just the mental support to, uh, to do it is huge because I, I was going back and forward all the time. Like, yeah, I'm doing it, I'm not doing it, I'm doing it, I'm not doing it. And he was all the time, it's a great idea. He never yeah. said it was a bad idea. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, ah, I was already trying to back off. And he said, yeah, let's, let's go check out the like batteries. Just let's go to a hardware store and see battery banks. And we'll mm -hmm. try to work um, one day and to see how much you need to charge your computer. And then that was the moment I was like, Okay. He's doing it, right? Because I need a computer for my job. Uh, I got a, I got a code for every day, right? So now yeah, can yeah. I do it? Is it possible? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So my, I'm still working full time. I, I didn't do any compromises for work. I'm uh, still yeah. working normally. So I need like good internet, good. Uh, I need like yeah. monitor and good. good yeah, good, good, good gaming chair, um, yeah. good desk and everything. Um, so, so yeah. He said, yeah, let's just go to store and check out the battery banks that they have and see if it can power your whole computer. And then that moment when we were walking in stores, I was like, oh, he actually means it. Oh, OK, so I, I forgot to mention this whole thing that he, Jordan said, I'll build the whole thing for you. Um, yeah. Like the, uh, the, wow. the, the, the van. Wow. So yeah, yeah, I got I got a work van. And then Jordan converted the whole thing into a house. But one thing is to to say, okay, I'll build this for you. The other thing is to build it. And it. when and I I mean I know that whatever Jordan puts his mind mind to, he'll do it. He will literally yeah. do nothing else but that until it's done. Yeah. The and thing. Yep. yeah, but then I was also like, okay, he's selling the house, so he will probably have to move. So. Um, it will be tough if I say, if I say, if I get the van and then I start working on it, he helps me, he helps me out, but then, and then he has to leave because he sells the house. And then he was really, when he said, let's go to a hardware store to check out the battery banks. I was like, oh, okay. So he, he actually means it. And then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm all, all in for it. And yeah, it's, it's incredible that I have. Uh, that I had him to, um, you know, such good friends. To help you make this happen, right? Yeah, to help me. Yeah, without him, I, I, I think I would be just in thinking phase. It would be my idea for a day, and then it would be gone. Yeah. But um, he, he really um, enabled me the all this, yeah. and yeah, literally built the thing. He would be, yeah. he was working for one month straight. He would be mm. building the van. 
he would wake up in the morning all excited go out and work on the van until like 1 or 2 a.m like for one month straight wow yeah wow. yeah he yeah he, he, it's incredible what what he did and yeah that's why i'm excited also to see what he does in croatia now um i mean not sure if it's spoiling anything but yeah he's moving to croatia and doing he's huge stuff croatia. there he's doing, he's doing <laughs> yeah. too. so when we're talking about uh jordan and how important it is for people to have people around you who support you and like i say exceptional people that you were around with somebody like Jordan, who's going to put his mind into something and do hundred percent when he likes it. And he yeah. does a great job. And uh, when I was there during the whole process, uh, I would stop by to see how you guys are doing. And I can see the van uh, changing, right? From a work van, a good size van, but it was a work van, uh, transportation yeah. into a home. And Jordan did a great job, gutted it. You guys did incredible. He was very detailed, uh, picked the right material. He was spending hours and hours on YouTube learning how to do things, right? Yeah, yeah. also that, yeah, when I was, um, I, so I got the van from New Jersey, so I had to take a train to go to New Jersey to pick up the van. And as I was on a train, he was like, oh, you should get these batteries and you should get this heater um, because he did research on everything. And really, mm -hmm. I'm super, super glad that he did because i wouldn't do that much research and yeah. i think i think it would be disaster if i picked everything <laughs> myself and yeah jordan jordan just did really good research on everything yeah. and everything seems to be amazing so far so far i wouldn't change How anything have you been living in the van so far or, or no? so now now about for a month because mm -hmm. i i moved into a van a little bit before new year's and and then I was still living at Jordan's driveway and I was using his uh, shower and yeah. bathroom. Um, so I was doing that. Gotta for get him ready. Gotta get him ready. Yeah, yeah. And, just to long, yeah. and just to see, okay, is, is there something that really doesn't work out in the van so that we could yeah. do some modifications, but yeah. we didn't have to do anything. And now I am, I'm like um, wandering around um, for about a week and a half. And it's literally no problems at all. I, I can I can I can pull up at random uh, parking lots, and mm -hmm. no one knows. Like I have I have all the lights inside uh, my van now, and from the outside, yeah. from the outside, no one knows that I'm in because um, yeah, Jordan even like learned how to uh, sew, so, and he so, yeah. he he, he saw, machine, yeah. yeah he he bought sewing machine. And he saw this curtain that I can just yeah. like, z uh, it has a zipper in the middle so that yeah. I can go to driver's cabin. And yeah, it's a blackout material so that even during the night, I, ran, I pull up at some parking lots and come back here, zip that up and turn on the lights. I'm on computer yeah. and so far no one bothered me yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can, I can work. Yeah, yeah and, and like from the outside, it just looks like an. You can have piece, yeah. I, I can have my piece, yeah. So Jordan did amazing job converting this van, and it's crazy that he also did it just in yeah. one month. Because uh, I mean, if you Google it, um, it takes, people, so yeah, it takes like three months, half a year, one year. Yeah. People are converting these things forever, and yeah. Jordan was like, "Yeah, let's just get it done." So it's crazy to uh, to think about what he will do in Croatia because, you know, this van van is just a van. It's like small, I mean, smallish scale project, and now he, his vision for Croatia is um, beyond what we really, yeah. we we imagine. I think, and I, I'm confident that it's just going to be mind blowing what he's going to do. Yeah. It, it it will be just something unreal. Um, yeah. just, and this fan is a great proof um, yeah. that, he, that he, I mean, yeah, he, he has skills plus he can learn skills. Literally, he, I mean, this van, it's also like all the electricity you have to wi uh, wiring, yeah, wiring. wiring, you have to put the, like all the, oh man, connect the wires together. Um, you know, it Trans needs uh, transformers, the little machines. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that as well. So adapters, adapters. Yeah, it, it has to be right. And he learned all that stuff and yeah, it's, yeah. it's been working. Um, so it's crazy that um, whatever skills he, I mean, whatever thing he 
puts his mind to, he, he will do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm really, really excited to see his journey in Croatia. Yeah. Uh, you guys are exceptional. Like I said, yeah. I always you know, I keep saying this in every podcast. I'm uh, very proud of you guys and jealous I didn't have a team like you do and like you did, right? Because you were, you were have these friends for, for a long time and we are friends. Uh, yeah. But you guys are growing together in this special time. And Jordan, exceptional, exceptional talent. The things that he can do now in Croatia, his journey is also incredible now. Uh, he just moved to Croatia. Well, he was supposed to. I guess he's still in, in Charlottesville because of flight cancellation. And that's a whole lot of story with the luck that he had with the, with the flights. Yeah, with flights, um, yeah. But he's moving so so into another exciting journey. And you are on an exciting journey. What is your plan for next year? So how are you going to do these states yeah so for now i i'm thinking just uh getting down to so currently i'm in north carolina and as much of a plan as i have now is to go south um to florida so that i can be on warm weather and just spend some more time there and then i don't have a plan afterwards i'll just start driving to the west except i am planning to to come to, I, I'll be in Eugene in July, I believe, where okay. there is World Championship. Um, so hopefully, yeah, Hilmar, if, if you're watching this podcast, hopefully, hopefully you're working out hard and hopefully you make it there. Um, but yeah, I, I'll be, yeah, I'll be in Eugene for World Championship um, to watch, obviously. Um, but other than that, I don't have a plan. I, I just, uh, I'm, I'll try to approximately spend a week in each state and move yeah. through all the states. And I'm also not bounded to one year. I, it, it can take longer. It can take shorter. It really doesn't matter because, um, you have, you have everything that you need. You have internet yeah, yeah. to do your work and, uh, you have all the time you're young enough, right? This is the time to do it. Exactly. This is literally the only time that I could do it. And just if I didn't live with Jordan, I, I couldn't have done it. So there is not many people that have the opportunity to do it, so that have friends that can build them a van and friends, that, yeah, have, yeah. that have um, even motivation to do this. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Because it, it is a big decision, after all, just to move in a van and just by myself, I'm, I'm traveling alone. So yeah. I, I don't mind it at all, but I feel like lots of people are not um, comfortable on their own and they are not, um, yeah, they just don't feel comfortable on their own. And I, I feel comfortable by myself and I can be in complete silence for hours and I'm fine. So even, even driving so far, I, I don't really listen to music. I was just driving in silence, and I've I've been on like few hour, few hour, few hour long rides, just in silence, just with my thoughts. And no. I think yeah. I won't have problem being alone for. There is something sure. soothing about you know people meditate, uh, people take showers to get ideas, right? They they get into these zones to get ideas uh, or for their business or for their lives yeah. or whatever it is. Uh, there's something I find also very soothing when I travel, when I drive, that, that ideas come to me. And I, um, I love that uh, mono, monotone of the road. You got to focus. You got to focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a straight focus. And that's what they do uh, a lot in the mindfulness um, meditation, right? So you focus on one thing, mindfulness. And that's what, what the road is. You have this road that you have to follow, focus on. And it's amazing what your brain uh, will throw at you ideas and how how uh, soothing and calming they can be, but also very productive. So it's oh. interesting that you have that as well. Yeah, that's that's for sure, hundred percent. Me, I was driving and got some great ideas already, and I was just driving, took my phone, I and just started yeah. recording a video, and I said this and this and this idea, yeah. and yeah. Um, I have have some clips that i mean probably yeah. won't make sense in a few days from now but uh yeah. definitely definitely it opens Inspiring, up the, right. Inspire, yeah you get inspired yeah you get inspired and you just start thinking about you know random things that i wouldn't be thinking if i was just at um at my apartment playing video games, music um, or playing video games yeah yeah music is really 
uh, music music is great, but it's also like really distracting at a lot of times. Um, so I don't like to listen. I mean, sometimes I like. To well, listen. you do listen music when you study, wasn't that the case? I did uh, listen to music when I studied to get um, rid of the distractions. So mm, I, I, okay. I, I would just oh, put headphones. Right? Yeah, to be zone. in the zone, I would put headphones on and like I, I wouldn't listen to music with lyrics. I would listen to sound of nature or sounding waterfalls yeah. or stuff like that. So otherwise I wouldn't, um, I, otherwise I get distracted if I. You had different musics for different things that you were doing. So different music for studying. What kind yeah. of music did you listen when you were, uh, your prefer preference music when you were lift? Oh, oh yeah. And for lift, I like um, angry music. Um, <laughs> I like the metal um, that uh, Rammstein was good. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it, we, we always had fun, like just walking in the weight room, jam up the music and we would, yeah. we would have one hour of so much fun. Um, yeah, lifting yeah. and being all pumped up and excited. It was it was amazing having you at your prime. So you bench press two hundred ten or two hundred five two hundred ten, right? Two hundred ten, yeah. Two hundred ten, yeah. yeah. First time in your family to bench press over two hundred kilos. I was always <laughs> yeah. joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you had I mean, pole ball at two hundred plus, uh, two thirty, two forty. Yeah. I mean, Pobo can bench press whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, true. But whatever he wants, right? He'll mark cleaning 180s. Um, and Philip and Jordan uh, being out there with their strength as well. Philip always not as strong in yeah. terms of weight, but his power was so great because he's so long and he can move the weight. And Jordan bench pressing, I mean, you guys were just beasts. And every time you get to that weight room, I remember there's no – somebody had, can have a bad day, but – Pobo will have a good day. You will yeah. have a good day. Uh, Jordan, right? it's always somebody, and you get to that weight room, it's like, oh, let's go. It's always a go time. Yeah, yeah. You, you cannot have a bad day when you enter the weight room. It was always such a great energy, and I miss that a lot. Um, I, I got I got uh, some of it back uh, living with Jordan for the past year, and I was lifting with Jordan. Yeah, we, we lifted really well. But still, it it was not UVA facility. It wasn't that the whole place was ours, and you know, we were still like in public, so um, couldn't go yeah. that crazy. But I I got that back. I got that back. Um, that uh, some of that feeling. So that that was amazing. And now 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 I see that um, I'm working out by myself. Literally, even all the weights, uh, things that I used to warm up with on bench press and all the lifts like now are so heavy and it's really because of the people and i mean also motivation continuously yeah you don't have people around you to continuously do that with you right 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 um and also i don't really have a good reason to, bench to, press to bench you should press. never yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and so that's the now, thing they they say uh it's good to be young when you're young right yeah yeah uh, so not not trying to do things when you're 45 that you're <laughs> supposed to do when you were 20s right in your 20s so. it's, that's true, uh, yeah. You've done it. That's your PRs. You go strong, um, and you always have that on the resume. Now you want to be healthy, and you work out still. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I still work out. Um, now I'm actually forced to work out because I'm showering in Planet Fitnesses. Um, okay. Yeah, so yeah. The showering this nation. Yeah, I don't. I don't have shower in my van um, because I mean we were planning that. Our sacrifice building the space, yeah. yeah sacrifice the space and also like i can be in the van the whole day um i need to go out and move and planet fitness it's it's really like i'm positively surprised by it because it's really cheap it's only like 22 dollars a month and they have locations all around the us and it's they're, they're clean clean showers clean locker rooms um and they have some machines and you know I, I get I so I go and get some workout in just yeah. a little bit. I I don't do anything crazy anymore. I just my goal is just stay to shape. Yeah, shape, stay yeah. in shape and especially sitting like having a desk job. I'm yeah. sitting I'm literally sitting the whole day in here yeah. at the desk. Eight hours, so place, yeah. yeah, so I have to go and move and that's now I just do so that I break the sweat. Um mm -hmm. I try to break the sweat and that's really my goal. I don't long, do anything. Yeah. How long do you work out for? Like maybe thirty minutes to an hour. Um, okay. So it's really, it's really um, 
I'm just trying to do it consistent and not yeah, super yeah. high intensive because then I would, wouldn't have the motivation to go. Um, so it, it's definitely different. It was it was hard to it was really hard to um, how to say to swallow that ego of bench pressing, you know, or, or like all the two hundreds. Yeah, 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 yeah. Being the beast to now being a regular person going to Planet Fitness and working out there not doing anything well, and impressive yeah. weights and it, it was definitely mental uh, took some adjustments um and now now i'm able to just go and get the sweat going and shower and i'm i'm yeah. fine so, yeah. that's a very very good point uh transitioning from a full-time athlete uh yeah. or somebody who's identifies as a strong man right getting into a full-time job that you there's no reason you should be lifting you know 300 kilos yeah, uh, yeah. saying 300 kilos bench pressing 200 kilos there's no reason for that right so how was that transition for you you say you took a little bit of of time to, oh yeah oh i'm not yeah. an athlete anymore now i'm a regular person yeah it was it was it was hard because um at the beginning while i was still throwing i was like um I, I thought, yeah, when I'm done throwing, I'll just go crazy in bench press. I'll lift like at least 500 pounds because um, I, I didn't lift 500 pounds. But I was, I was so excited about bench press. And then when I was done throwing, I, I went to, I, I was lifting in the gym. And at the beginning, I was doing decent weights. But then with time, it was just going down. I was just becoming weaker. And it was all mental i really didn't have a good goal um and i was like why why would i even need to yeah. bench press 500 pounds so yeah. that was that was really the beginning of my oh what am i doing transition. and yeah transition. The, the transition yeah and then um at the time so I, I i got done throwing and then all the football practice that we did yeah the, so the, we didn't mention that Nazi was yeah. trying for uh for uh football as well and they they will get a they would have got you if there was an injury that you had right yeah yeah that that's true so that really got me uh, motivated as well even after throwing because i was done in spring and then i was still in school for the for the, another semester yeah so at that time working out it was still i was so pumped up and yeah. you, i remember we were pushing sleds and you would take time even after our lift to to teach me about football, um, which was which was amazing. Um, it was a journey on itself. So, yeah, it was a journey on itself, and didn't work out. I do not. I literally do not regret that it did not work out. I am just I'm, happy that I we did. Bit, yeah, I'm I'm so happy that we did it and that we we had yeah. fun. It it was fun. It was really yeah. fun. Um, just like trying it out and pushing the sleds and getting ready. Um, but yeah, so it was that football team was in 2019 then after i got done throwing and then at the beginning of 2020 i was like okay i'm just like working full time and i was i lived in um tyson's corner in northern virginia and i was lifting in that gym um and that's at the time and that's the time where my bench press was going down and, and then corona happened so the gyms closed for um for two months and i didn't do a workout in two months i was like yeah. oh, okay I, how did I you feel not working out for those two months <laughs> yeah I, I just got really skinny i just got really skinny um and then i started uh, at the beginning it was great but then i was like ah oh, i'm just sitting i'm literally just working the whole time yeah. and then with my roommate at the time i started going on walks which was also which sounded really weird because old people go for walks you not not like young people just go yeah, out yeah, for a walk yeah. and that's it as a workout so we started doing that um just to move bodies a little bit yes yeah. and i was like oh it feels good it feels good to move a little bit and then then they reopened the gym um in about two months and then i i was like okay now i have to go get back um yeah. lifting and at that time i was like okay i i can I don't need to impress anyone. I don't need to impress myself. I just need to do a few lifts and break the sweat. And that's good for me. And still, I think um, 
that's that's what I'm trying to do today. How many how many times a day or how many times a week? Sorry. At that, at that time, I was doing four times a week, um, but now I literally I'm now I'm working out a bit more just because. Um, okay. Because some of the now. shower. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, that's my source of shower, so it forces okay. me to go out. Well, it forces you to work out. Yeah, yeah. After sitting down so long. So long. Yeah, yeah. Which which is great. It, it works out great that I, I get a good workout and also Planet Fitness um, yeah. they're normally open twenty four hours and they have parking lots um, next to them. So I just you can park and sleep. Yeah, I, I literally I park park at Planet Fitness, sleep for the right. night, then uh, wake up in the morning, go work out. I, I started doing the rows row, rowing thing like yeah. because yeah. it's whole body workout machine, and. Yeah. Yeah, that machine, it, it's pretty good. Um, just start sweating a little cardio. bit. Yeah, yeah, a little cardio, I need to um, need to get um, healthy. No, I, I think every athlete should always work out, not yeah. to the point that you are lifting 200 kilos uh, in bench press, right? 450 pounds. Uh, because obviously, when you get older, your abilities, your bones are going to be different. Uh, in a yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's very, very good that you that you have that desire. Like even though you're on the road, uh, you still yeah. have that desire. Not just obviously for a shower, but for your health. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's um, that's literally why I'm doing it. I I don't need to have huge muscles or anything. Yeah, yeah I, I don't. Yeah, I remember um, at work. Uh, I mean, because they saw me when I started working, I was 300 pounds. Yeah. Now I'm like two to fifty to forty, or like it varies. And um, anyway, I remember one person asked me, um, "What's my target? What's my target? Like body? How do I want to look like?" And I was like, yeah. I, "I like how I look like. I I don't really have a target. I just I just want to maintain what I have. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. it's not it's not that I'm trying to you know get ripped or you yeah, know yeah. impress anyone. It just to stay kind of in shape and yep. not to not to um not Live to get the stomach or yeah yeah be, back. yeah yeah that, that that's one thing that's a huge thing because um like in the van i can stand but i i can't completely stand straight so totally. like yeah i i have a little down a head down uh -huh. so when i go in gym or even when i go out of the van i'm like okay i oh, just need to too, yeah to yeah rowing yeah and that's why I, that's how i got into those rows and then yeah just like lots of like lat pull downs and all that stuff so that i'm like um that my you're posture getting, you're, you're getting your posture straight yeah. yeah hopefully yeah because i definitely found myself sometimes standing outside um even at, back at jordan's place i would just stand outside like with my head down just I'm because still, yeah. so, 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 subconsciously so yeah. now i'm trying to do that um so that i don't you know, because one, once you are hunched back, um, it's hard to fix it. So it's better to do it ahead of time. So yeah, yeah you, you do the right things. Yeah, a lot it's of, a lot of back, back muscle workouts. We'll yeah, have to yeah. strengthen that. And, oh, I, we we're talking about uh, yeah. So you don't want you don't need to be three hundred pounds and bench pressing so heavy. You're still two forty, so you're still not small guy. Uh, yeah. But it's yeah. important to work out to stay healthy. Once an athlete, I say always an athlete, a true athlete, right? And but 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 even you don't have to be an athlete. You just have to take care of your body, right? You want to eat good food, work out, um, while enjoying and traveling, right? And many people when they go on the van life, they don't work out. Uh, but I'm happy to see that you did that, and I'm happy that you got off your comfort. What you guys are doing really well uh, that I've seen over the years you jordan and, and everybody on the team you go out of your comfort zone so you go oh, yeah, yeah. you came to us out of your comfort zone you transferred even though you there was something unknown there uh and got here right and then you took a double major and then you're like okay i'm gonna work for this company in us i'm not gonna go back to slovenia and then uncomfortable again i'm gonna do this trip around the us and it's just yes there's risks along with this um taking these these risks right there are risks but there's also so much reward you got oh, education yeah. in america you met incredible people uh and now you have ability to travel around the world us around the world uh with skills that you have acquired during the during your time in studying so it's it's good to be uncomfortable to go through that 
uncomfortable zone and pass to it, obviously with good um, plan, right? You're not just going to yeah, yeah. head, you go ahead some somewhere without thinking about it. But uh, I'm very, very uh, proud of you guys that you guys are doing that. And you have done that so many times. Yeah, just yeah. And I think, I think it's really what most people are just afraid to do things. And then at the end of the day, regret, I, yeah. I think people regret People regret things that they didn't try. Yes. And they don't regret things that yeah. they try, I yeah. feel like. So for me, what's the worst thing can happen? I, I mean, yeah. I still don't know. You do it right, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like even now, I don't know if I'll be able to survive the all 50 states in a van. Yeah. I, I think I will, but the worst in the worst thing, I just get apartment somewhere and yeah. that's yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. I'll have 10 years from now, I'll think back and I'll be ah, that was funny that I, I thought there I is be, no way yeah. you're gonna be like, oh I can't believe why did I do that? Right. I don't think right, 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 right. Exactly. Yeah. It it could be though, if I didn't do it in 10 years from now, I would be like, ah, I wish I, I had such a good opportunity. I wish like I wish yes. I did it. But um, so that's why and that's that's also like with football. Um, that was a good example that didn't work out. It wasn't even close because I, I wasn't even on uh, that I've seen over the years, you, Jordan, and, and everybody on, on team, you go out of your comfort zone. So you go, oh, yeah, yeah. you came to US out of your comfort zone. You transferred, even though you there was something unknown there uh, and got here, right? And then you took a double major and then you're like, okay, I'm going to work for this company in US. I'm not going to go back to Slovenia. And then uncomfortable again, I'm going to do this trip around the US and it's just... Yes, there's risks along with this um, taking these these risks, right? There are risks, but there's also so much reward. You got oh, education yeah. in America. You met incredible people, uh, and now you have ability to travel around the world, U.S. around the world, uh, with skills that you have acquired during the during your time in studying. So it's it's good to be uncomfortable to go to that uncomfortable zone and pass to it, obviously with good. Um, plan right you're not just gonna yeah, yeah. head you go ahead some somewhere without thinking about it but um, i'm very very uh proud of you guys that you guys are doing that and you have done that so many times yeah yeah and i think i think it's really what most people are just afraid to do things and then at the end of the day regret, I, yeah. I think people regret people regret things that they didn't try and yes. they don't regret things that they try i feel like yeah. so for me, what's the worst thing can happen? I, I mean, yeah. I still don't know you. The, right, right? Yeah, yeah. Like even now, I don't know if I'll be able to survive the all 50 states in a van. I, yeah. I think I will, but the worst in the worst thing, I just get apartment somewhere and that's yeah. it. And yeah. I'll have 10 years from now, I'll think back and I'll be, ah, that was funny that I, I thought I would There's be, no yeah. Way. I'll be like, oh, I can't believe. Why did I do that? Right, I right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. It it could be though. If I didn't do it in ten years from now, I would be like, ah, I no, had such a good opportunity. I wish, like, I wish I did it. But um, so that's why. And that's that's also like with football. Um, that was good example that didn't work out. It wasn't even close because I I wasn't even on their first practice ever. Um, so that's one of those things like. Uh, you that's, did it 100%, you yeah, yeah. And you have no regrets. yeah. E exactly, yeah. Because there are some people. Oh, yeah, you could be good football I player. Have, yeah, yeah the, I, I could have. I oh, could have. I did it. You know, I probably it, didn't go. Like, why it, don't you do it? it exactly, exactly. And I feel like that's why I think it was a great thing that I tried and didn't work out, so that I I have um, clear clear peace mind. Yeah, peace of mind. Yeah. And yeah. same thing for um, for the van life. I thought, okay. I'll at least try because so many people want to do it. So many people, um, it's their life goal to do this. Yes. And they they save their their whole life. They save up money and then they retire and then go travel. Or they are even like some people just work a few, few years and then quit the job and mm -hmm. go travel. And I had great opportunity where I really didn't have to risk anything. I'm not risking anything. Um, you were still like, working. Yeah, time. yeah, yeah working full time yeah yeah it's um it makes the travel slower during the week because obviously i i can't travel while i'm working but 
at the same time, I think that's also a great thing because um, I, I get bored of traveling, so I need something to distract my mind and work. Work is great. Um, that for the whole day, I don't have to think, okay, where I'm going to go next, like if I'm going yes. to be South Carolina, North Carolina. That completely is off my mind uh, for the time that I'm working. So that's good. I mean, work is a good distraction. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not a distraction, but you know what I mean? That, it's you a know, good break. Yeah, it's a good break. Yeah, I, I have... I mean, you know yourself, if you just do one thing and then if you just... Um, if you do it too much. Yeah, if yes. you do it too much and then you even like... If you have just one thing going on in a day, yeah. like imagine if I had just... Um, if I had just throwing um, and yeah. n not college or like no school, nothing. Yeah. And if your practice doesn't go well on uh, that day, then you go to dinner or you, you go get uh, lunch or dinner or whatever. You're still thinking of, of that practice. And then you go yeah. to sleep, you still think of that practice and that influences how you feel. Yeah. But if you have multiple things going on and you say, yeah, okay, the throwing didn't go well, but lifting went well, for example, yeah. um, that's already something that breaks the uh, the thing. And then same yeah. for me, if it's like, if it's super cold outside and I can't do exploring, I'm like, okay, at least work went well. I I, yeah. I still work let the me, whole let day. Let me finish this project. Let me, let me uh, catch up on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So All it's day. it's good to have um, multiple things so that mm -hmm. mind doesn't get over over that doesn't overthink yes. yeah. um yeah. and so far yeah it's been it's been working working great well that's it you are an inspiration to many of us uh to many of us uh, i don't want to take too much of your time I, I do have one more question for you um and uh like i said you're very very um good in being uncomfortable going through the comfort zone and accomplishing things and uh like i said i, I very very big motivation for all of us to do things like you were doing to go fully in a couple of things but go fully right don't do a thousand times th thousand things uh half half kind of doing it but do a few of them doing 100 percent like you did in school and sports and now you're doing van and work and uh, i know you enjoy your work really really much as well so yeah yeah it's been, that, uh, been great, it's, yeah. It's great as well and you knew like you said you knew you're going to be a computer programmer uh, for a long time if you had advice uh, to your young self, what would you do? What would you tell somebody who's coming from Europe, let's say, to America? Why should they go, or is it right for them? Oh, to to come to the US. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's it's definitely. I mean, I can say. I mean, I can say that it's great for me. It worked out extremely well for me, but it's not. I know that it's not for everyone, but. If you if you are in the same situation as I was, that you have opportunity to come to the US, I think you should definitely take it because what's the worst thing can happen? You go back, literally. So I think that would be the biggest advice to anyone who is debating whether to come to the US or not. I would just say go for it and give give yourself a week, a month, and then you reevaluate. And it doesn't even need to be a week or a month. It can be two years in and you can say, I I'll go back. But yeah, I feel like yeah. people, I mean, you you find out quickly if it is for you or not. Um, but not not trying will create regrets. Um, and trying will literally just maybe, I know, you'll start school half a year later in your own country, but that's yeah. all. So I feel like with lots of things, should just consider what would be the worst case the worst case you literally live the exact same life as you do now but that yeah. with with the difference that you you tried something else so i think not for most people that are afraid to come to the us and they don't try to take the opportunity their worst case of coming to the us is the life they live now because yeah. they're they're just not trying it out um yeah. So right. that's definitely just um, worth exploring. Yeah. Yeah. Just try and also it's and uh, I I I watch. I mean, ah, it's just a random thought. But like even if it means that I know you come to the U.S., you lose money for 
plane ticket, for example. At the end of the day, plane ticket is a certain yeah. amount of money. Yeah. And money can be always made later in life, yeah. but the memories and you know, you yeah, opportunities, get, yeah, 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 cannot so like, yeah. yeah. So don't be afraid to yeah. spend some money that might not be worth it at the end of the day. But also, like, you can always make money back later. Yeah. But you cannot get you. You cannot. I even I can go back to like to be twenty years old anymore. Or like yeah. for example, yes. I I had to I had to invest a lot into this van, and that's okay because no money in 10 years from now would be able to buy me the opportunity yeah. to travel in a van at the age of 10, 25. So yeah. Yeah. definitely, definitely, if it involves a little bit of um, risk in money, um, I mean, a little bit, obviously, yeah, if you're, ris yeah. Ris if you're, yeah, yeah if, you're, if you're risking, if you're, you're risking everything, you spend yeah. all your money and you have zero left. <laughs> right, yeah, and or ma mainly like, how people do it is not spend on the money and have zero left. They even take yeah. debt. So don't don't. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't do that. You would suggest that. Yeah, uh, but if there is a thing that you want to do and that it's not going to affect you significantly if it doesn't work out, I would say just go for it yeah. and try it out. And I think that's what makes right. life interesting. Just to do to get to be going out of your comfort zone as many times as possible. Yeah. Uh, I like, I like what you said. Yeah. If it's not going to make, if the worst case scenario is that your life stays the same. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Why not yeah. do it? Right. So yeah, exactly, uh, obviously yeah. don't take risks to sacrifice your livelihood or, you know, get in debt or, you know, lose mortgage, whatever it is. But if, if the worst case scenario is not as, is not, it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. If you lose the opportunity, right. Then why not do it? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love it. Uh, not say again. You're a big inspiration for us. What's the next uh, state that you're gonna go to? Um, I, I'm going to go to South Carolina next, and apparently, apparently in South Carolina there's nothing but Charleston. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I I was planning to do like few few different things in each state, but in Charleston so far it seems like uh, I mean in South Carolina it seems like it will be just yeah. Charleston, but. Awesome. What yeah. did you? I saw that you were somewhere where the Wright brothers first took off. I didn't know that was in uh, North Carolina. I thought that was somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, that was Outer Banks in North Carolina. So it's, um, I was at the, literally at the land where um, they were they just, off. yeah, they, they were like trying for years to take off the first airplane. And then I, I think it was 1903 or 1902 that right. they actually succeeded. And I was standing on that hill where That's where awesome. they they i think they just ran with the plane and then um tried to fly and yeah. Yeah, they they succeeded so i was in that museum a couple of days ago and yeah. really if you look at the map where that is it's in the middle of like the sea basically so yeah it's uh wow yeah you should look it up when okay. when i i put it up to i put up to the map and then yeah. i went there and then as I was driving, I went through bridges and, and it was also night, but I was like, wait, is that water everywhere? And then I looked at the map where I am and it's literally in the ocean. Was it, was it on a beach before? It was a beach before, no? Um, did it land in the ocean or was it, was it, did it change? Oh, I, I, I don't know, but okay. pro probably, ah, actually, I don't know how it, how that became a thing, but we'll check it out. Yeah, it, it's definitely interesting. Like a point on the map and yeah i was just i you just drove there <laughs> yeah i drove there maybe, maybe your next uh adventure is gonna be a boat boat trip <laughs> around around the, the u.s or visiting, around the americas visiting all the oceans in the world in a boat <laughs> well go yeah try uh, uh flowing would you say flowing through the oceans floating flowing Flo uh, flo floating uh, well now it's it Thank you very much for your time. I know you have oh, some uh, you. You hit the road literally uh, <laughs> cover cover some cover some space. We will be checking out with you. I'm excited to see your videos. You said you're gonna have a YouTube videos. You're gonna upload yeah, it. Yeah. So currently, my plan is to um, to release a video for every state that I'm in, uh, just 
not a kind of random memories um i just have gopro and so i go to walk through the city and i see some cool things i take a video or for example now i'm in um, charlotte and i came here just because i worked here a few years ago for the summer okay. so i went back to check the the building that i used to work in okay. so i i'll have a bunch of random memories or i mean random things or memories that yeah. mean something to me um and i'll be uploading that and also have a series of van conversion now um mm -hmm. i think i'll be uploading that as well so I'll, I'll have some different things and obviously always open to feedback and opportunities and if there will be huge demand for some other videos i'll, I'll happily do that as well so it's really I'm just I'm just trying to make this journey fun and yeah. you know enjoyable and it's not like okay I have to get and this learn one. learn some be... things about every state right yeah yeah learn something and then maybe maybe also yeah make it interesting on YouTube um, if people will follow um, well, we are excited we will follow all of us throwers and I'm I'm sure I'll throw us around the us and the world because you guys uh, you guys were very famous while during your time here everybody knows about you uh and things that you are able to do while you were here so you got a lot of followers already and okay. uh keep us updated we will we will be excited to see next move that you hit um now that's it thank you so much time for your time we'll stay in touch and again you were a great athlete you're a great person you're a great student you made us all better for your presence we can't thank you enough for that. Um, I'm telling you this from the bottom of heart. And I'm not going to follow you just on YouTube. I'll be following with you for the rest of your life because you made we made uh, something special here. You're an amazing, like I said, person. Uh, you changed my life. And uh, I will, uh, I'll consider you a friend forever. So yeah, I'm very you. happy to see you doing well, my friend. And keep winning in life. You won in college. You're winning right now. Keep on winning. Well, thank you, and likewise, I mean, it's all, really, if we look back at it, it's all because you you are putting this thing together, uh, these great things together at UVA, so if it wasn't for you, um, this whole thing, the UVA dream wouldn't exist, um, so definitely, I, likewise, I'll also consider you as a friend, and I'm really really pumped up every time i see your text or every every time i see a post on uva throw so yeah. every time i see you get really excited so um you also yeah. keep up great work and yeah everything that you do is amazing and we'll, we'll keep on building on what you guys made and what we made right so yeah we'll keep on building exactly uh, yeah. now i'd say safe travels and keep us updated post uh, very um, often yeah. Sounds good. Um, all right. Thank you.